Welcome everybody. If you will begin to join me and we will get started on lesson five of our fall study, Wisdom from God. My name is Teresa Sosa in case some of you actually don't know my name, but I'm Pastor Bo's wife. But more importantly, I'm here to teach the Word of God this morning. And I think that you and I both and all of us need wisdom from God, don't we? And so I'm giving you a few moments to join us. And hi, Gina. I got your message. I'm going to see if I can't sneak it by the workbook by your job today. That would be um, amazing if I can sneak it into my brother and get it to you. Those of you that are wondering what I'm talking about, I'm talking about our adult student guide. Today we are on page 21 in our adult student guide, Wisdom from God, Lesson 5. I think this is pretty appropriate for all of us to get some wisdom from God. I know I need him to speak to me and I know you need him to speak to you as well. And so if you're going to get your Bibles ready, you're going to be looking a lot today in the book of Job. You're going to be looking a lot today and reading from the book of Proverbs. And so uh, obviously the book of Proverbs is considered the book of wisdom. And so we are going to be reading a bit from there as well. And so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to open in a word of prayer so that you can get situated if you will agree with me in prayer. Make sure you have your Bibles and your books nearby. And let's get into the Word of God together. Father, we come in the name of Jesus and we are grateful for the opportunity to actually have a Bible in our laps, a curriculum, a maybe a student guide and if we don't have a student guide i pray father that that they'll just be able to receive from your word we thank you god that you are going to meet us here and you're going to give uh, me wisdom in order to teach this morning and we pray for uh, receptive hearts that each heart would be open to your word and that we would receive uh, correction, rebuke, and encouragement, and uplifting from the Word of God this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. So, I, you know, I love teaching the Word of God. I especially love sharing with you without a mask on. Have you guys noticed that everybody that talks to you nowadays, it sounds so mumbled, so mumbled isn't it? And so, it's... It's awesome that I get to communicate with you and you can hear my voice and my heart. Uh, I know that uh, I have for years and years always confused, good morning, Jarlene. I've always confused this word, the wisdom from God. Uh, I've confused it with a couple of different words, uh, wisdom, uh, understanding, knowledge, all of these words I probably interchange uh, pretty often. And so I took a little bit of time to try to figure out what is the difference between knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Have you ever wondered that? What are, what is the difference? I, you know, sometimes I'll say, oh God, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Am I asking for information? Am I asking for guidance? Am I asking for understanding? I am, I, uh, I hear somebody trying to sneak in the door. They don't understand I'm in here, I guess. But uh, what is the difference between all of these uh, words and how we use them, inter we interchange these words and we probably don't mean what we're saying oftentimes when we're even uh, uh, conversing with one another. So I wanted to kind of break down these words for you and kind of give you an idea of what the difference is. Uh, an understanding, the word understanding is a comprehension or to co uh, comprehend uh, information. Have you ever read a book or you've uh, read even the Bible and you're like, oh, I don't even comprehend it. It's not like 
It's not like dropping into me. I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. But an understanding is a comprehension um, of, the, of the word of so forth. So now we go to the word knowledge. Knowledge. Now knowledge is gained through books and facts and studying. Those of you that are in um, college, you're going through all the studies and the practicums and the papers and the research, you know, and you have all of these truths uh, regarding this certain profession that you're studying for, and you gain a lot of knowledge. It's in you. It's head. Have you ever heard of head knowledge? It's head knowledge. It's head knowledge. And then the last one is wisdom. Wisdom. So what is the difference between knowledge and understanding and the word wisdom? Because we're studying today on the wisdom from God. The wisdom from God. Now, wisdom involves um, a perspective and the ability to make sound judgments about a subject. In other words, um, it's not just memorizing facts. It's not just knowing all of these things. It's the ability to discern uh, when it's appropriate to uh, apply th this knowledge or that knowledge. Uh, wisdom is knowing when to say it and when, when to do it. Wisdom is another word in the word of God uh, for the word wisdom would be discernment. Uh, mamas, uh, women, we always talk about a woman's intuition or a mom's uh, knower or intuition. Uh, the word of God refers to that as wisdom, wisdom the discernment, the ability to, to decipher things and to rightly put your words. Um, you, are, you are not just filled with a lot of knowledge. You're just not filled with a lot of understanding of the word of God. You know when to rightly place those words. And so wisdom is very valuable. And Solomon asked God, as he was ruling the kingdom for wisdom. He didn't ask for wealth, although that came with the wisdom, but he asked for wisdom. And wisdom to rule the kingdom. Is wisdom just information and facts that he was asking God for? No, because you see, when you're standing before thousands of people and they bring an issue to you or a situation to you, or a problem to you, you have to be able to not just answer them with head knowledge. You need to answer them with heart knowledge. And you know, uh, experience is the best teacher. And that's why so many little kids get into so much trouble because they haven't had the experience. And that's where you and I guide our kids. So wisdom, wisdom is um, a perspective or a discernment and the ability to make sound judgments about a subject. So we wanted to talk a little bit today about the wisdom of God. Now our principal uh, verse, our key verse this morning um, is in Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10. This is our key verse today. So if you will turn to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs is the book after Psalms in the Old Testament. And so that might give you a little bit of uh, guidance on where to find it. But we're going to read uh, chapter 9, verse 10. This is our key verse today. And I will read it for you since I can't have you stand and read but I'm assuming you're reading with me. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So you see all three of these words um, listed here. The word wisdom, the word uh, knowledge, and the word understanding. So the fear of the Lord, the reverence of the Lord, this is not like, oh, I'm so afraid of you, but it's absolute reverence and revering the Lord. Um, this is the beginning of wisdom. When you come to the, to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and he is entered into your heart, 
God begins to reveal his secrets, he says. I believe it's in Amos. He reveals his secrets to his prophets and to his servants. And so we know that God begins to speak to us and to guide us. Have you ever felt like you were going one way and you just felt like in your spirit, I just need to go this way. And you find out later on that God had protected you. That is the discernment and the, and the wisdom that God gives us. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, another scripture that is not listed in your books or in your um, study books, but I felt like it was quite important um, is a, a scripture that years ago I used to go to wisdom seminars with Pastor Bo. Uh, uh, Mike Murdoch would lead these wisdom seminars and his verse that he would always um, use to lead into his study was in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 and it says this, wisdom is the principal thing Therefore, get wisdom. So wisdom is the main thing. It's the main thing. I remember, I remember years ago I watched a, a, a movie where, where I, can't even, I can't even relay it right now, but where they kept saying, you got to remember the main thing, the main thing. And I remember Billy Crystal saying, well, what is the main thing? What is the main thing? Well, God is saying to you and I this morning or this afternoon or this evening, whenever you're studying with me, wisdom is the main thing. It's the principal thing. It's the most important thing. Well, I thought that studying a book and memorizing everything, and I thought that uh, going to college and studying my profession and, and being a very learned, a good student and have a lot of information and be able to go on Jeopardy and answer all the questions correctly, you know, before anybody else that I can prove how knowledgeable and how smart I am. I thought that would be the main thing. And God's like, that stuff is all important, but it's futile if you don't have wisdom. It's like, it's like owning a sword and not knowing how to use it. Or owning um, a blender and never reading the instructions, ladies. And you just sit there, you're like, I had the money and the ability to buy this thing, but I have no wisdom. I, I, have, I don't know how to use what God has given me or what I have bought from the store. And it's important that you have wisdom in order to discern to discern, even the Bible tells us that we are to discern the times, that we are to discern the times. So we're gonna talk about three different areas, the source of true wisdom, and then the next area is wisdom for living, and the third is the goal of true wisdom. Now, I'm probably getting the cart before the horse, but the goal of true wisdom, is it to prove how smart you are and how knowledgeable you are and how you have all these gifts from God and that you are able to discern and, and be um, uh, basically above and actually that is not it at all and we're gonna learn that today. Now, as we walk through Christian life, it's easy to fall into the trap of going through the motions, amen? Very easy to get into this trap of just kind of the same old mundane thing. Um, we uh, we want to visit the scripture today, and we want to understand what it means to truly know God, to fear God, to to walk in with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And so now we're going to learn from the Old Testament some valuable information that is going to take us on a little journey this morning. Um, we went, I know that uh, in your workbooks, it has a opening activity that says wise people. And it says in the space below, name a wise person that you know or have known and explain why you consider that person to be wise. They're wanting you to basically Think about what you consider to be wisdom 
or uh, wise. I know people that have never graduated high school or even um, quit high or junior high just to work in the fields and everything. But there's some of the wisest people I know that they're able to to discern situations and they're able to um, uh, figure out some of the the most complex situations. And it's only done from the wisdom that comes from above. Amen. And so I'm interested for you to just kind of challenge yourself and see who you think, what would be, who would be the people that you would fill in today that you believe to be wise, wise. And so I, I want you to compare um, those people with what we're learning today and the word of God and see basically how that lines up with what you're thinking. Maybe you were just thinking they were very wise because they have a doctorate, or maybe they're very wise because they have a, a master's degree in a subject, or, or they're just worldly wise or whatever, and you've come to find out, wait a minute, they're just knowledgeable. They have understanding that maybe their wisdom, their discernment doesn't line up. So let's look into the word of God today. What is wisdom? What is wisdom? And I guess it depends on who you would ask or what, you, what your uh, understanding is of wisdom. We are going to begin in Job chapter 28, and we are going to uh, learn a little bit today about the true source of wisdom. Where does wisdom come from? Would you like to know where wisdom comes from? Let's get into chapter 28 of the book of Job. And we're going to be rereading in just a moment. I'm going to get myself situated and give you time to turn there. And while you're turning there, we're going to begin 28 and we're going to start in verses 12 through 22. And our subtitle today is Wisdom is Worth Seeking. Amen. So let's read verses 12 through 22, and then we'll discuss it a bit. It says, but where can wisdom be found? It says, and where is the place of understanding? Do you see how there's, they're split up? Man does not know its value, nor is it found in the land of the living. So let me just stop there for a moment. If you're looking for wisdom, and uh, here on this earth, you're thinking that it's in a man or it's in a, even a counselor or even a pastor or even myself, that I can give you the wisdom of the world. It, the Bible tells us here, it's not found in the land of the living. Have you ever thought about that? Well, I, I need to seek Pastor Bo's wisdom. No, you need to, you need to seek his wisdom his understanding and comprehension. Now, although he operates in discernment, um, but the wisdom, the discernment of the Holy Spirit can abide in you. And uh, I, just so you know, uh, that experience is, experience is your best, is the best way to uh, discover wisdom. And it says it's not found in the land of the living. The deep says, it's not in me. The sea says, it's not, in, it's not with me. It cannot be purchased. You cannot, you, I know that uh, people get uh, degrees and they pay thousands and tens of thousands and even hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to get these huge degrees and doctorates. And then there are some that don't even use that. They just have all that information but they're not doing anything with it. And here he's saying, you know, you can't buy wisdom. You can't buy it. Um, it's not, it cannot be valued in the gold of Ophir, in the precious onyx or sapphire, neither in the gold or crystal can equal it, um, nor can it be exchanged for jewelry or fine gold. Um, can't go to a jewelry store and say, I have a lot of wisdom, so can I buy this ring? He's saying here that it cannot be purchased. Um, <clears throat> it says, it's not to mention, 
that it shall be made of coral or quartz for the price of wisdom is far above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia cannot equal it, nor can it be valued in pure gold. Um, for where, for, from where then does wisdom come? And where is the place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all the living and concealed from the birds of the air. Destruction and death say, we have heard a report about it with our ears. So let's just stop there. Wisdom is worth seeking. Uh, many people seek wealth and knowledge and information um, before they will ever um, seek out wisdom and discernment and, and the ability to decipher things and to, and to understand God's ways rather than our ways. Um, many people are seeking higher degrees because they are seeking knowledge or information. Just so you know, we are drowning in information in this day and age that you and I live in. We live in a day and age where you're flipping on the news every day. You want to hear information and we're in information overload. And the ability to take that information and to decipher it and to weed it out and to have discernment and to know what to allow to come into your spirit and what not to allow to come into your spirit. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. Because let me tell you, if you're just an information junkie, you're filling yourself with all of that stuff and that anxiety and that frustration with so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so because they said this and they did that and they and they should they should be doing this and you're just filling yourself with information. You will never have peace. Never have peace because you don't have the wisdom to be able to set that that frustration and that anger with that information on a shelf and allow God's wisdom to come in you. You know, God, God's ways are higher than man's ways. We we're frustrated with the world that we live in. We're frustrated with one another and everybody and everybody's aggravating us and there's no answers. Oh, Andy, I love you. Good to see you. I can't wait to see you again. But we are so frustrated with all the information that we're hearing and we're operating in fear and anxiety and we're in information overload. We are drowning in information and we're starving for wisdom. I'm going to say that again. We are drowning in TMI. Have you ever heard that? Too much information. But we're, but we're starving in wisdom in the discernment, because trust me, if you were really, really leaning not on your own understanding, but you were leaning on the Lord and his ways and his wisdom and his guidance and his discernment, things would be a lot different in your spirit. Okay, so here we see that this, this information is worth, uh, this wisdom is worth seeking, but fearing God is true wisdom. So let's finish this chapter and let's begin in verse 23. It says, God understands its way and he knows its place. And when we're talking about it, it being wisdom, it says, for he looks to the ends of the earth and he sees the whole heavens to establish a weight for the wind and apportion the waters by measure and he made a law for the rain and a path for the thunderbolt. And then he saw wisdom and he declared it. He prepared it. Indeed, he searched it out. And to man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. I'm going to say it again. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. If I was you, if you have a highlighter, I would highlight that. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. To depart from evil is understanding. So if you are wanting the wisdom and the guidance of God and the discernment 
to be able to know which way to go or what to do in any situation. I'm telling you, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. That is the source of our wisdom. So now we know that this fear is not a, a uh, I'm afraid of God or I'm running from God, but it is an absolute reverence for God. And we're understanding God and we're reading about him and his characteristics and his mannerisms and what he requires of you and I. And when we fear the Lord and we operate where we're trying to um, obey him and understand him, it says that is wisdom, that is reverence, that is guidance. Now, just so you know, wisdom is a gift from God. Hi, David and Angelina, love you. God bless you, sweetheart. So wisdom is a gift from God, and that's also not probably in your book, but let's look at the book of James. If you will keep your fingers in the book of Job, and we're going to look at the book of James. Hebrews, James, um, in, the old, or in the New Testament. And we're going to look at chapter 1 and verse 5. And I want you to know that wisdom is a gift. Everybody say that with me. Wisdom is a gift. It's a gift. And who is giving you that gift? Let's see here. Verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and, and it will be given to you. Let him ask in faith without doubting, and he who doubts is like the wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. This gift is given to you and I by God. Now, you notice that it's not saying if any of you lacks information. There has been many a time that I have uh, taken a test or um, studied for something and I've said, oh God, I need your wisdom. Really what I'm asking him for is information. I'm like, well, God, you said you would give me wisdom. You would give me wisdom. and. And so I'm asking for wisdom as I take this test. But uh, what you really need is the information. You needed to do the studying. You needed to do uh, your book work. And then you ask, wisdom is the discernment, is the be a, to be able to discern the times and to be able to rightly use that information that has been given to you. The wisdom is a gift from God in according to James chapter 1 verse 5. Now, also wisdom is one of the gifts of the spirit. <laughs> You're so cute, Charlene. <laughs> Charlene likes my glasses. Oh, I'm still getting used to them. I got to get them adjusted. They're falling off my face. So, let's go to 1 Corinthians Again, in the New Testament, I'm just trying to lay this out for you so you can kind of see the difference. 1 Corinthians, and we're going to look at chapter 12, which lists the gifts, the gifts of the Spirit, the Spirit being the Spirit of God. So here we are, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we are going to look at verse 8. Well, we're, we're listing all the gifts in verse 4. We're listing the, the difference of ministries in verse 5, the difference of uh, diversity of activities in verse 6. And then in verse 7, it says, The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given a word of wisdom. A word of wisdom. Is that me just giving you like how smart I am? Actually, that's giving you, um, it's a discernment. It's information from the Holy Spirit that guides us and leads us. Because you'll notice that it says the word of wisdom through the Spirit. And then to another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. So wisdom and knowledge here are two separate entities. Knowledge, information, 
what you've learned. Um, you can help somebody with a word of knowledge. If you have information that you've studied and you've learned, there's so many times that we say, oh, I need to talk to somebody that knows more than I do about this subject. And this is where your word of knowledge can come in. Or, they, or you might say, I need to talk to somebody who's been through this storm, who, who's been through this storm and God got them through it and I want to talk to them so that they can teach me how to walk through this. This is a word of wisdom or discernment from the Holy Spirit. Um, the fear of the Lord is always misunderstood. Um, but I want you to know that it is not a, a frightening fear like everybody's watching scary movies in the month of October. Why you do that, I have no idea. Uh, I, I'd rather live in peace and not jump out of my chair or, and be afraid of those crazy, uh, crazy movies that are just trying to scare you to death. So here we see that wisdom is a gift. And wisdom is also one of the gifts of the Spirit. So it's truly a gift, amen? So fearing God is true wisdom. Now, the second part that we need to get into is wisdom for living. Wisdom for living. So this is important. Um, turn, pro, turn to Proverbs. So again, you're going to look at Proverbs is the book right after the book of Psalms. So I'm going to take a quick drink here. While you're turning. And we want to see here uh, in the book of Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, the subtitle above the top of chapter 3 is Guidance for the Young. This is information given to the young men and women or sons and daughters that are coming up in the Lord. Uh, I know that young people, teenagers, children, oftentimes are like, all right, all right, all right, I've heard you say that already. I don't want to talk about it anymore, but I want you to know that, again, experience experience the experience that you and i go to help us to discern and to have wisdom and um, to help people to not fall into the traps that are set before you so i'm sure that you've offered advice to your children um, and you've even offered advice to adults uh, whether or not people have listened to your advice or your information or your guidance um, that's up to them but I just want you to know that right here we're seeing a wisdom from the Lord in order to lead a more uh, a happier and a more successful life. Um, I know that this is guidance for the young. And you might say to me, well, I'm old or I'm older. Uh, so whatever, you know, it doesn't really apply to me. And I want you to know, yes, it does. It absolutely does. Um, this is also speaking to uh, the young in heart. <laughs> That's me. That's me, young in heart. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 18, all right? So if I'm going to turn in my book right here, and let's get going. It says, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands for the length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. This is so true. Young people and even older people, um, you do not, do not forget the law of the Lord. Do not forget the fear of the Lord, which is uh, the beginning of wisdom. Um, it says, don't let your heart do whatever it wants to do. Keep the commands of the Lord. And in keeping the commands of the Lord, then you will understand that you will receive length of days and a long life um, and peace they will add to you. There's nothing uh, worse than seeing people just running around, running amok and doing whatever and saying, well, I'm young. And so I'm sowing my, what they call wild oats. And, and, and then those of us that have been down that road before are trying to give them wisdom or discernment to be able to see what's around the corner and what might happen to them or accidents that might happen. Uh, the other day, I, I 
was privileged to be able to cook for uh, my granddaughter's uh, baseball or softball team. They went to state and they were all so excited and they were at practice and they knew that they were gonna come to Malia's house and have a beautiful dinner. And I made them chicken Alfredo and, and everything just served them. And it was my honor to serve all these young ladies that had worked so hard. But those girls all got in their car, you know, they're 16, 17, 18 years old. And then they decided that, hey, let's race to Malia's house. So they were all driving crazy and they were flying into the driveway and screeching around the corners and everything and, and laughing and giggling and they jumped out of the car and rolled in the yard and, and uh, my daughter-in-law walked out there and said, hey, 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 I need to talk to you for a minute. I need to give you some wisdom, <laughs> you know? Uh, this is dangerous and this might happen to you. And, and she said, uh, she took each one of them by the face and said, I wanna go to your graduation. You know, the decisions that you're making because you're young are because you think that you're uh, immune to any kind of accidents or whatever. You don't, you don't have the ability to see around the corner. But you and I that have some years under our belt, we have the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to speak to them. So here he's saying, keep, keep my commands so that you, the length of days and a long life and that peace they will add to you. He's not threatening him here. He's just saying that when you make unwise decisions, a lot of times your life is shortened, isn't it? It says, let, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor, high esteem in the sight of God and man. And here is a very well-known um, oftentimes quoted scripture and I would even like you to memorize it as many of you already have it says trust in the Lord with all of your heart um, don't don't allow any piece of your heart to to doubt but trust him with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding when you and I lean on all of our knowledge, our head knowledge, when you and I lean on that and trust in that, well, I know all the answers. I can get through this. I can figure it out. I'm a smart girl. I'm a smart guy. Uh, when you are trying to lean on your own understanding, it, it oftentimes fails you and you will drop to your knees oftentimes. If you're leaning on your own understanding, um, you're on shaky ground. If I'm going to lean on somebody, I want to make sure that that's a firm foundation and that thing is not going to fall. And I'm going to lean on the Lord because he will not fail me. And in all your ways, acknowledge him. All of your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Don't just think, I got all the answers. I'm smart. I, I've done this before. I I don't even need to read the instruction manual. Any of you out there ever built something and said, hey, I've done this before. I don't even need to pull out the instructions. And then you're trying to get something together. And at the very end of it, you realize you have extra parts. You know you're guilty. You're all guilty. And then you say, wait a minute, maybe I should read the instruction manual. Maybe I should get guidance and wisdom from the person who created this product. And so here he's saying, don't be wise in your own eyes. You need God's wisdom. And the fear of God is uh, the beginning of wisdom. And so here it says, do not be wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord. So he's, he's saying that wisdom comes from fearing the Lord and here in the book of Proverbs, it says, don't be wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and it will be strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions. Now here we are beginning with uh, wisdom comes from fearing the Lord and from, from obeying his commandments but then he also says, it's also with honoring the Lord with your possessions. Everything that you own, 
you don't own. It's God's. Um, the earth is the Lord's. The things that you think that you possess, they're all the Lord's. Everything on the earth and in the earth is the Lord's. And so many times we are just trying to stack up all this stuff uh, because it brings us a sense of security instead of leaning on the Lord for our security. Um, right now we're getting ready to move my mom and dad into their new home and and we're realizing as my mom is going through drawers and my dad is going through drawers that there are some things and stuff that we've held on to. We're like, I don't even know why I've got that thing, you know. Why do I need all of this stuff? You know, if I'm leaning on my possessions, someday one of those big dumpsters is going to pull up in front of your house and all your prized possessions that you've spent all of your life trying to accumulate will be going right in there. And so here we see that it says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. This was the hardest lesson for me to learn when I was first um, saved. Uh, we were, uh, Pastor Bo was making about $85 a week and he was building trailers. I don't know how many of you know that at Wilderness in Lafayette. Uh, he was building mobile homes, trailers, you know, and he made about $85 a week. And then um, we sought the Lord and we received him in our heart and we started going to church and started reading the word of God. It wasn't even so much a man that said this to us, but the word of God. And we started noticing that everyone that was blessed in the word of God, they gave their first fruits to the Lord and they lived on, they gave the first 10% and they lived on the 90 um, because all of it is the God's 100% of it but he just says give me the first fruits and with that he will multiply it back to you and he says with the first fruits of all of your increase so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine and here I was like but but maybe I want to pay this bill or maybe I need that new pair of shoes or maybe I just want to have a steak instead of hamburger or whatever. Um, I was so accustomed to spending and eating all of my fruit, first fruits. I couldn't understand why I felt like there was a hole in my bucket. Everything was falling through. And I remember the day that we started tithing to the Lord and giving him our first fruits. It was like prying a dollar bill. You know, I, it was like God was having to pry my fingers open to get it into his hands until I noticed that as I began to release what was in my hands, God started releasing what was in his hands. And the blessings of the Lord began to come into our lives. And when I would do the budget at the end of the month, I would say, how did we make it this month? Because it doesn't match. And God always said to me, because your source is not, is not your job. It's not your bank account. Your source is me. And when you give to me, God says that he promises to give back to us. Good measure, shaken together, you know, pressed down and running over. He will fill us up to overflowing. So praise God for the wisdom that comes from the word of God that I, I think I have a lot of wisdom on how to manage money, but really God has the ultimate wisdom, doesn't he? And so here we see that he's saying uh, that you will be overflow with new wine. And then verse 11 says, my son, don't despise the chastening of the Lord. Um, you and I, oftentimes we fight against somebody who wants to correct us or discipline us. Do you remember when you were a little kid? You remember when you used to get into, into trouble, Judy? I see you, Judy. Do you remember when you used to get into trouble? I remember my mom, she used to say, uh, wait till your father gets home. I'd be, all day long, I'd just be freaking out when my dad was coming home. I didn't enjoy correction. I didn't enjoy discipline. But have you ever noticed that the word discipline is in the word disciple? Yeah. Yeah. And so this is going to lead me into this scripture. 
Do not despise the chastening or the discipline of the Lord. Don't detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as the Father, the Son, in whom he delights. How oh, Praise God. When God is correcting me um, and disciplining me, it's because he loves me. And he does not want me to speed home in a car, <laughs> you know? He wants me to get somewhere safely, and he wants me to uh, uh, operate in uh, a disciplined life instead of just being haphazard and, and out of control. And so here, he loves those whom he corrects. I didn't feel loved uh, by my dad when he would discipline me, when he would get angry with me if I got a bad grade. I remember I got a bad grade in fourth grade, and poof. I got in so much trouble for that bad grade. Well, after that, guess what? Uh, that discipline didn't feel good and that scolding didn't feel good, but it lit a fire under me that I never wanted to be disciplined for that again. And so from then on out, boy, it was straight A's all day. I was like a little bit of an overachiever after that, but I learned my lesson. And so God loves those whom he corrects. So Father God, bring on the discipline and the um i i want you to correct me and to re-guide me because i know that you know best you remember the old show father knows best well i want to say to you father god knows best he knows best and then it says in verse 13 first it's saying that we can be disciplined we give to the lord we're disciplined uh, by god and then he says and happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding, for her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain more than fine gold. Um, you might see a very wealthy, wealthy person right now and say, they are just not smart, <laughs> you know, or they are just so off base. And yet when you see somebody that, that, leads a disciplined life that listens to the Lord, that tries to gain um, the knowledge and the understanding of the Lord and have the discernment and the gift of the gifts of the spirit in operation, you will notice that their proceeds, their rewards are better than silver or gold or rubies, it says. It says that the length of your days is at her right hand and in her left day, left hand are riches and honor. So if you'll notice in verse 14, it's saying that wisdom is better than riches and gold and rubies and so forth. But then it says that the reward of getting wisdom, remember that scripture I read to you in the beginning in Proverbs, the rewards of getting wisdom is a long life and riches and honor her ways are ways of pleasantness and all of her paths are peace so i'm going to just stop there i just don't want to get off on a tangent too much but um her ways wisdom are ways of pleasantness and her paths are peace you might say well god has given me the wisdom that i need to give to you right now and you i'm going to straighten you out and I'm going to tell you off and I'm going to tell you all the things you're doing wrong. And, and I'm telling you that that is not wisdom that is from above. Uh, when God disciplines us, he disciplines those who he loves. He redirects us. He gets us on the right path. He has us lean on him rather than our own understanding. It's the wisdom that is from above and it's pure, right? But when we start leaning in our own understanding and start going all crazy, um, we sometimes get brutal. We're, we're bitter. We're angry. Our words are like, I, I just told them the truth. I just told them as it is. Have you ever heard that? And those of you that attend my Sunday school class will know what I'm going to tell you right now. But uh, I always say, when somebody tells me, I just gave them a piece of my mind. And I always say to them, you have told me that many, many, many times that you've given somebody a piece of your mind and you keep giving all these pieces of your mind away and now you've lost your mind. 
<laughs> you don't have any mind left, you know? And so the ways of wisdom are pleasant. They're peaceful. Uh, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall see God. Jesus said that. They're peaceful. They're pleasant. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth, and by understanding he established the heavens, and by his knowledge the depths were broken up, and the clouds dropped down like dew. My son, do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, so they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. Isn't that powerful? So now we wanna, we wanna go over, I think I might just skip, skip this part right here. And I'm going to have you turn to Ecclesiastes chapter seven. And I might revisit something here in a minute. But the goal of true wisdom. What is the goal of true wisdom? Ecclesiastes, <laughs> Sandy, you've been in my class. You've heard me saying about that. If you keep giving pieces of your mind away, you will lose your mind. Amen. So turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And we are going to begin in verse 11. <clears throat> We're talking about the goal of true wisdom. Wisdom is greater than wealth. Wisdom is greater than wealth. So if you'll turn to Ecclesiastes, it's after um, the book of Proverbs. So you're just turning to the right a few pages and you're in verse or chapter seven, verse 11. Are you ready? It says, wisdom is good with an inheritance and profitable to those who see the sun. For wisdom is a, is a defense as money is a defense. But the excellence of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those who have it. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. Wisdom gives life to those who have it. Wisdom gives life to those who have it. So what does it, what if you don't have it? What if you don't have the discernment from God? What if you're just doing your own thing? What if you are just saying whatever you want to say and you're just spouting off your information uh, like, you, like a prize possession? Maybe you're on Jeopardy and you're the highest winner because you have all of this information in you. But if you, have, if you don't have wisdom, if wisdom gives life, then what does all of this other stuff give you? You're trying to gain all this, uh, these riches and this information and the doctorate and the degrees and the things. Without wisdom, you don't, you, you don't have life. You, it's not giving you life. It's not, it's not life for your soul. Now, an inheritance without wisdom is horrible. It's bad. It's foolishness. Now, I want you to think about um, if maybe you're a young man or a young woman and you have a family member that owns a big corporation. You think of the sons and the daughters of uh, some of these multimillionaires, some of these sons and daughters, and they're behaving badly in the street and they're running amok and they have, they're driving their fancy cars and their, their fancy lifestyles and they, they have no wisdom whatsoever and no discernment whatsoever. They just run amok. And so somebody who is young that has not had very many life experiences that is perhaps has a multimillionaire for a father or a mother and, and that person passes on and leaves that child, that young child, a huge inheritance, millions and millions of dollars. And they have they don't have 
they have information. They know how much they got. They know that they, they have the knowledge of how to spend it. They have a bank card or they have a debit card. They know what to do with that money. They're like, I'm gonna buy me a car. I'm gonna buy me a house. I'm gonna buy me a boat. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna travel here. I'm gonna buy everybody a drink. I'm gonna spend it here and spend it there. I'm gonna be the life of the party. And you'll find that when you don't have wisdom and you have been given this huge inheritance, that's a horrible, horrible situation to put somebody in. Um, the foolish living will be uh, uh, evident to all. You'll say they're just running through that money like water. They don't know how to save. They don't know how to manage it. They don't have the wisdom to, to manage and to, the knowledge to manage that. And Lord, Lord knows that we see a lot of that all over the place. Um, Proverbs 23 verses 4 um, and 5, and I'm just going to read it to you. You don't have to turn there. It says um, that do not wear yourself out getting rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Cast uh, but a glance at riches, for they are gone, and they will surely sprout wings and fly off like a, into the sky like an eagle. And this is the NIV version. Um, those, those riches are fleeting. They have wings and they fly away if you don't have the wisdom from God and how to manage and how to, to uh, uh, manage that kind of uh, wealth that God has given to you. And so earning money is futile if you don't have wisdom. Wisdom is good with an inheritance and <clears throat> it's profitable for all. Wisdom is, is a defense as money is a defense, but the excellence of knowledge is the wisdom that gives life to those who have it. So now we're gonna turn and godly wisdom brings obedience. We're gonna read real quick Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verses nine through 14. I don't know if you've noticed, but these lessons have a lot of scripture. And so if you ever have to pause me to get to that scripture, that's fine. Um, I want you to take it deeper. You have your study guide and their student guide and there's some, there's some wisdom, there's some information, there's some knowledge um, in your book that you can go a little bit deeper. It's asking you some probing questions making you think about what you have read. I don't have the time um, within this hour in order to touch on everything that I need to touch on, but I'm giving you basically the whipped cream uh, or the cherry on top, and I want you to get into the meat of it throughout the week and to go deeper into this study, all right? So Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses nine through 14, this is where Solomon is praying for wisdom and God is granting his request. And it says, and moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered and he sought out and he set in order many Proverbs. The preacher sought to find acceptable words and what was written was upright words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads and the words of scholars are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd. And further, my son, be admonished by these. Of making many books, there is no end, and much study is wearisome to the flesh. So let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is man's all. It's your everything. Fear God. Keep his commandments. Remember the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So he's saying here the conclusion, st much study is wearisome for the flesh. There's too much in your head. TMI. You don't need to go on Jeopardy. <laughs> I'm sorry, but all this information. Have you ever been with somebody who's a know-it-all and they know everything and they give you all this information? You're just like, ah, 
It's just refreshing when you hear wisdom from the Lord. Um, it's, a, it's a word that's peaceful and it's life-giving. Amen. So here he says, the conclusion of the whole matter is fear God. And remember, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Keep his commandments for this is man's all. This is your everything. This is all that matters. In other words, this is it. You know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All this other stuff will be added unto you. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or whether evil. And so let's conclude today with this. Uh, godly wisdom brings obedience. And God is commanding us today at the very end of this to fear God to keep his commandments, for this is your everything. I'm going to say it again. This is everything, everything. Everything that you need is right here in front of you. Godly wisdom, the fear of the Lord. And the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom. Get discernment. It's a gift. It's a gift from God given to you. And it's not your ideas and your thoughts. It's God's thoughts. And God's ways and God's thoughts are higher than yours and mine. And so I can trust him. And I am going to quit leaning on my own ways and my own understanding. Because every time I do, I fall. How about you? Same thing, right? Every one of you. And I just love you. And I thank God that today we have learned to get wisdom because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God bless you and I'll see you here again next week and throughout the week I want you to study even more in depth in your student guides and, and understand the differentiation between wisdom and knowledge, information, and understanding, comprehending what you're reading. God bless you and I love you.